There's excitement in the chase, this I know Yeah, I'm going for the ride And by myself I am alive And I saw Still I run towards the wind And let the challenge draw Hey everybody, welcome again to Arise Shine with John and Carla Capetto at Broadcast of Faith Heights Church. It's a blast hanging out with you guys. What can I say? We love our audience. We love the comments. We love everything about you and that you're interacting with us. So thank you for sharing these programs and doing your part, things that we can't do. And thank you so much for believing yes. in what the Lord's doing through this program. Carla, yes. say hi to everybody. Good morning. And we do have next week, we're going to have kind of a special announcement. Mm -hmm. We got some things coming up we're going to be doing a little bit of changing right. and rearranging of some things and mm -hmm. you know it's always good to examine what you've been doing yep. and and just see if you need to make any tweaks yeah you this, know? just evolve a little yeah. bit yeah so um Get just be expecting next week we'll have um just a couple of yes, announcements to make good. and it's going to be exciting it's going to be good god is moving god is oh doing boy. things so i mean good. things are happening uh, it seems like time is just just the other day we were mm -hmm. talking about how I know time really doesn't speed up, but it's sure, I, maybe it's our age, I don't know, but <laughs> it just seems like time is going so fast, and, and there's so much kingdom work that needs to there be done, is. so oh much my, kingdom my, my. business that needs to be done, and we are just trying to keep up with what God's calling us to yep. do. It's exciting, it's fun, so be expecting a good announcement next week. As far as today, we're going to talk a little bit more about righteousness, mm -hmm. um, which is a powerful subject. We're going to take you know kind of go of a couple of different areas of righteousness right. uh which are which are really good and important to talk about yeah they're about. all connected they're all um, connected but righteousness being right with god yep powerful and receiving subject. that gift yes receiving gift. that it's a gift. gift the gift of righteousness yes. this is not something we work up to it's something we wake up to yes first corinthians 15:34 mm. we talked about it last week awake to righteousness the bible says and sin not, yeah. for some have not the knowledge of God. Yeah. Well, it's a waking up more than a working up because you can't work up to what you already are. You right. just got to live out what you already are. Yes. But if you don't realize you're the righteousness of God in Christ, you're going to still try to climb that ladder. Someday I'll be righteous, and all along you've already been righteous through your faith in Jesus, through your acceptance of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You have been made the righteousness of God mm -hmm. in Christ. Great, great teaching last week. Mm. I'm telling you, I'm going to go listen to it again. So I encourage you to listen to it again because a lot of revelation mm -hmm. came forth mm -hmm. last time. Can I just say something here? I just Something you just said made me think that we need to realize we are who God says we are. <laughs> Wake up to righteousness. Yeah. We, need to, we need to see the world out there will tell you that. Just go with your feelings and mm. what do you feel like? Oh. I even listened to an interview a while back of a, of a young person and i say person because i actually don't know if this person was a boy or a girl but it was a young person mm. who was saying some days i feel like being a boy some days i feel like being a girl some days you know mm. and and they just the world is teaching these young kids that just go with your feelings what do you feel like today oh boy. and that is not what we're supposed to do the bible clearly tells us how we are made that's right how we are who we are oh, wow. and yeah. we need to always go back to who does yes, the bible do. say we are now when it comes mm. to gender of course you know we are the way god made us to be mm -hmm. duh you know that is really right. a no-brainer right. it really is of course everything else is deception and confusion but we need to see who are we who what does the bible say we are that's right. the bible says we were made righteous we need to say yes sir i'm going to be righteous it's that simple you know, just as you were talking there, Carla, the flesh is like a little child Yeah, <laughs> that needs to be told what to do. It, you can't let a little child eat whatever they want to eat, go wherever they want to go, play wherever they want to play, do whatever they want to do. You discipline That's your child right. or you're not a good parent. He That's that spares right. the rod hates his child. You're going to discipline your child so they don't get run over by a car. That's right. You're going to discipline your child so they don't fall off the bar stool and hit their head on the tile floor. That's right. You're going to discipline your child because you love them. Your flesh is like a child. My yep. flesh. Everybody's flesh yep. tendencies is like a child. If you let that thing be the Lord of your life, you will be so messed up. 
you won't even know what's up or down. Oh. If you let your flesh tell you what's up, well, I feel like this, so I'm going to go this way. I feel like that, so I'm going to go that way. You are getting tied up in a devil's knot. That's you will be so right. confused by the time the day's over. You won't know if you're a boy or a girl. How about we just say, flesh, you are not the boss of our lives. That's you right. are a little child, and you are growing, and the inner man on the inside is going to tell you what to do That's and right. what not to do. That's right. Feelings, you are not the king. Yep. Emotions, you are not yep. the king. Yep. Carla, I've even heard people mm. say that they saw a scripture in the Bible. And, and then they said, but I have a piece about doing the opposite. And they went with the piece about doing the opposite. And I thought, what? Yeah. Since when did a feeling of peace become more important than it is written? It is written. It is written. Oh, my mm. goodness, church. No, 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 no. Feelings of peace cannot override the word of God. That's right. There'll be times you do things from the word of God that you have everything but peace. Your flesh is balking and squawking like a little two-year-old. Mm -hmm. Your emotions are saying, no, I want this, I want this, I want this. But you say, no, the Bible yeah. says this. Grow up, flesh. Get in line. Yes. We're doing God's yes. will. This book is the most precious possession we have on this planet. There's times in the mornings when I'm praying, mm -hmm. I just hold my Bible up to me and I just walk mm -hmm. the floor and I, am, I just thank God yep. for the Bible. <sighs> thank God for the words of God that he is speaking to us and just be so thankful for our Bible. Everything in our lives should revolve around and come down to this word right here. That's right. Has final say yep. about everything yep. in our life. Now, as you read this book, mm -hmm. you're gonna find out there's some things in the Old Testament that are not enforced today because a better right. covenant is on the scene yes. established upon better, better promises. promises. Yes. The first, the, the new is here. The old is waxing mm -hmm. old. It was for a time. Same God, same thing. Nothing's changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But his dealings with Israel under the old covenant before right. Jesus came, before revelation of the yes. devil and demons, yes. things were different under the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But this whole book, because even the... I like reading the New Testament, mm -hmm. or excuse me, I like reading the Old Testament with the New Testament in mind. Right. Because the New Testament talks about what's still in effect, the New Testament talks about what was just for Israel. And so you have to read all the Old Testament in light of the New Testament. But Carla, this book has saved my life. <sighs> it saved our life. It saved our church's life. It saved our children's lives. Yes. It's literally saved us from early grave. Yep. Saved us from hell. Yes. Man, I was headed to hell quick until this book came on the scene. Mm -hmm. And I realized it's not just a book. It's a covenant of God to That's us. That's right. And yeah, this book mm. is precious. Yes. What can you say? Yeah. This is where you find out who you are. Yep. Did you know James says that we are to look in the word of God like we look in a mirror? Mm. What are you looking for when you look in a mirror? See what Somebody you look else? Like. I'm going to look in the mirror and see what Carla looks like. No. <laughs> That's a little off. Well, I'm going to look in the mirror and see what my neighbor looks like. Mm, something wrong. Yeah. No, you look in a mirror to see what you look like. Yeah. Oh, mm. church, are you getting this? You look in the mirror to see what you look like. When's the last time you went to the Bible and find out what you look like? Mm, that's what did good. Jesus do? For, you know, everything Jesus did was for you. It wasn't so all, all our eyes would just say, oh, Jesus saved himself. Jesus was victorious for himself. Jesus overcame the devil for himself. He did all that you and me and he made us righteous mm -hmm. he made us holy yes. he made us new creatures yeah. he made us more than conquerors these are things that we were made not mm -hmm. things we try to attain to anymore not things right. we try to grow in man how can you get more how can you grow more and more than a conqueror you just <laughs> need right. to realize you are and start living yeah. it out and seeing results of that yeah. fruit of that Mm -hmm. But yeah, so we, mm -hmm. we, we realized at the beginning of these teachings about four weeks ago, we had to share some things with the listeners and even ourselves to get rid of this sense of unworthiness, yes. to get rid of this bothering in our hearts so the faith can't come out like a sword, mm -hmm. so that the boldness yes. can't come out and knock things out that aren't supposed to be there. We had to deal with what's bothering our heart. Yeah. Get your heart clean. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Believe you're forgiven when you do. Mm -hmm. And then live like you know you need yes. to live. And, yes. and don't worry about you know, past mm. mistakes anymore. And get up and be as bold as a lion and say, you know what? I don't have to understand it, but I can cast out devils. I can rebuke cancer because I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Doesn't matter how I feel or what others say. He says I'm right with God. I'm right with God. He says I can do this. Look out, I'm doing it. Yeah, that's good.
<laughs> That's good. Another thing, you know, we wanted to talk about in connection with this, because the whole theme of these last four weeks, I believe it's been four weeks, is nothing bothering. We want to get mm -hmm. to a place in our Christian life where there is therefore now none, zero, mm -hmm. not a speck, condemnation, condemnation to us who are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. We want to get to that point where it's no longer normal to feel guilty once in a while, which we grew up in a world that's preaching that hourly. Oh, yeah. Feel guilty about this. Feel guilty about that. Yeah. You don't measure up to this. Do better and you'll be better. Achieve more and we'll clap more or whatever. No. Yeah. You got to change your brain and say, you know what? Yep. I'm saved. I'm righteous. And I am going to live like it. Yes. And I am not going to live under a sense of unworthiness or a sense of lack of faith anymore. Mm. You don't ask your feelings if you can cast out devils. You ask God if you can cast out devils. Mm -hmm. You don't ask your feelings if you can overcome disease. You ask God if I overcome disease. Yeah. You say, of course you're an overcomer. Speak yeah. the right words. Believe what I said. And what I've already done will show up in your life. Yeah. And it all mm -hmm. has so much to do with our hearts not bothering us. Right. You know, there's a lot of people's hearts bothering them about past sins that the Lord already forgave because they've already acknowledged those sins. Right. A friend, that's just, that's, right. that's not supposed to be. Right. Get these words. If you're forgiven, you're forgiven. Yes. And the Bible mm -hmm. says mm -hmm. when God forgives, he doesn't remember the sin. Mm -hmm. He chooses to not remember. Two places I'm thinking right now, more than two. Isaiah says, I, even I, am he that blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. I will not remember your sins. I will not mm -hmm. remember your sins. So if you're going to go to God and talk about some past sins, he's going to go, what are you talking about? That's right. What are you talking about? Well, Lord, you know, three months ago when I did such and such, he goes, what are you talking about? Yeah. You're not going to get very far with God trying to get him to remember something he chose to forget. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember one time when our son was young and he was going through some pretty serious uh, sickness and disease and I would get in faith for his healing and then something would happen and I'd kind of uh. get in some doubt and complaining and fear and then mm. I'd get back in faith and, and I felt like I was kind of just going like this and one time I was talking to the Lord and I was just kind of saying how... You know, I just I just don't have the faith I need to have because I keep getting into doubt and mm. fear. And and the Lord showed me how if we repent of those times and if we turn from that, he doesn't see, oh, their faith is like this. All he sees is that's those right. mountaintops of faith. That's right. And so that's, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. good stuff. And you're not going to understand that with your natural no. brain. No, This is a supernatural thing you have to believe in your heart because when you feel unworthy and you've done things that were wrong, right. it takes supernatural help to say, you know what, that's not holding me back ever again. Exactly. God forgot it, I'm going to forget it. I'm yep. not going to let it bother me. Yep. I know um, when I was younger, <laughs> much younger, not two weeks ago, um, <laughs> I had committed grand theft. Um, and we're not talking two weeks ago, we're not talking two years ago, we're not talking 20 years ago, we're not talking 30 years ago, we're talking a long time ago when I was a teenager, <laughs> I committed grand theft. And I was working at a place called Funland over here in Eastgate Shopping Center when there was a, a game room there, foosball, pool, and all this stuff, pinball machines. And right next door to Funland was a music store. Well, Funland was open late at night, but the music store wasn't. And uh -huh. there was a door that connected the two units in the back. Well, me and a couple other friends got through the door. Uh -huh. uh, just, I don't know if somebody had a key or what, but we got through the door and oh man, ta -da! there were Epiphone guitars and <laughs> Gibsons and Fender <laughs> acoustics and all this stuff. And as kids, we went in there and we robbed the music store, put everything in the trunk, took it to an old house somewhere and let it sit there for a while. Well, lo and behold, I'm back at the fun land playing foosball, my black leather jacket, listening to Alice Cooper on the jukebox and all of having this great time. And all of a sudden, this real distinguished man walks in and says, hi, I'm Detective Rushing. Would you please step outside? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what did I do? I knew what I did. My heart was bothering me, <laughs> even though I wasn't totally saved. And he brought me out in the car. He put handcuffs on me, put me in the car, took me down to the Mesa County uh, Jail and I stayed in jail for a day or two, and I think it was overnight, and then my mom came, got me out in the morning, and I got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I did something I shouldn't have done, and lo and behold, I was charged with grand theft. 
I was put on probation for a couple years. But I was such a good boy after that, such a good boy, that after about two years, I think it was, I got a letter from the government, Mm -hmm. police department, that said, John, you have been very good. You have proven yourself to be clean of this matter. You are now legally expunged. Mm. And I thought, that's a weird word. It's like a sponge. It's like, what does that mean? (laughs) You are expunged. And I looked at that letter. You know what that letter says? I'm relating this to what the blood of Jesus does for us. Right. That letter says, John, this grand theft crime that you committed, this felony that you committed is no longer on record anywhere. You do not have to put on an application you've ever been committed of a crime. You are totally discharged, free. No one can ever bring up what you did except you. Wow. I thought, it's good to be free. <laughs> it's good to be it's free. It's good to be expunged. It's good to be expunged. <laughs> and you know what? The Lord expunged us. Yes. I mean, not only did he take care of the sin, but the consequences. That's right. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, the Lord bore our sins with the consequences, saith the Lord. Oh yeah. my God. Goodness, yes, you deserve pain. Yes, I deserve pain. But we don't have to have it because of our faith in the blood. So today when we sin and we confess that sin and it's under the blood, the devil will try to bring it up. Oh, boy. Unfortunately, other people will always try to bring it up. Other people who don't. Unfortunately, Christians, a lot Mm -hmm. of times Christians will try to bring up your past sins. Um, Yep. All we have to say is, it's under the it's blood. It's under the blood. It's under the blood. Now, Carla. It's under the blood. I've always had a hard time. How can we bring up somebody else's sins, but not want to bring up ours at the same time? Mm. How could we post something on Facebook about somebody else's sins if we're not going to post what we've done That's in right. private when nobody was looking? Yes. Things that nobody knows about except you and the Lord and the angels and the devil. Yep. Don't think you're doing stuff alone. That's There's right. eyes on you. That's and right. um, devil's going like this. It's okay. God loves you. Go ahead. Keep doing it. And yeah. then when it gets far enough, he goes, now you're going to die and go to hell because of what you did. Yeah. Devil has tried to get you to sin. Then he tries to kill you for sinning. <laughs> That's right. He's schizo. He is. But um, we have to get a revelation. Mm. We're forgiven. Yes. We're clean. Yes. I like the scripture in Romans where it says, who are you? to judge another man's servant. Mm. I thought, wait a second, what's he saying? Who are you to judge another man's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Mm. But then he says, but God will make him stand. Yeah. God will make him stand. Oh, Mm -hmm. boy, you know, I'm going to go ahead and mention his name. We have a good friend, a good couple friend named Blaine and Lori Bartell. Yes who live in Oklahoma in the Tulsa area there. And we love Blaine and Lori very, very much. Yes, we do. He is a perfect example of God yes. raising somebody oh, up my. and making somebody stand yes. who had fallen into such darkness. You know, one time we were talking to Blaine and I think you were talking to him about, um, or you heard him talking about um, one person decided to just slam Blaine because he had been involved in you know a lot of underground stuff and Texas and pornography and and just all kinds yeah. of yeah. stuff, prostitution, yeah. whatever you want. I mean, just A to Z as a minister, yeah. as a pastor. And um, he heard this guy just slamming him on the social media. Oh, Blaine did this and Blaine did that and he did this and he's no good and he did that. And, and somebody was talking to him, was it you or somebody was talking to him? So Blaine, what about all that? He goes, well, first of all, um, they don't know the half of it. <laughs> they don't know the yeah. half of it. And he'd already spewed out everything. The guy spewed out everything he yeah. could think of against yeah. Blaine. And Blaine said, he doesn't know the half of it. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. thought there's a guy secure yeah. in his resurrection. Yes. Secure yes. in his resurrection. And now yeah. he's getting pastors and ministers set free, couples help delivered, marriages help in marriage. It's kind of doing an underground work because nobody wants to stand up in the pulpit and say, hey, Blaine, help me get free from pornography or Blaine, help me get free from adultery. It's kind of a right. secret thing, but great ministry yeah, love great these ministry. guys support these guys so blainebartel.com if you're interested in blaine's yeah. work but and we'll have him good. back here again we'll have sometime. blaine and Lori back of course yeah. we will yes we're connected meetings. with them yep they're great great people yeah. but that's just another thing you know people will remind you of your past people will try to remind mm-hmm. you of your mistakes but mm-hmm. you know as long as you don't let that person take your crown yes why would jesus say let no man take your crown yeah why would he say that because a lot of people 
let other people talk them out of their ministry, which would bring a reward later right. or a crown later. Don't let any man, listen, man didn't call you, man can't take you out. That's right. If God called you to something, yeah, you may need to take a break after something like adultery or something. Yeah, you may need to get refreshed or whatever, but if God called yeah. you, how can man uncall you? That's right. Now, you may have to go yeah. somewhere else if yeah. they don't accept you where you're at, but you're gonna, you go mm -hmm. on. I mean, mm -hmm. it, golly, I mean, it's so amazing who God uses. Yeah. And who did terrible disqualifying things but still remained in positions God called them to? Yeah. King Saul. He's seeking demons. He's seeking witchcraft. He's yeah. seeking divination. He's trying to kill David. Killed a bunch of priests, innocent priests, and he still is a king. Mm -hmm. He had his end. He stumbled. He fell on the battlefield. But it, David, he murdered a man, one of his own, and took his wife and committed adultery and married her. And the Lord never told him to step down from being king. That's right. One reason is because he wholly repented with all of That's his heart. Right. And so you have to watch out about stepping out of something God told you to be in yeah. just because a man said you're yeah. supposed to step out. Mm -hmm. And not that there's not times of recouping and, and resting, but it's a very serious thing to step out of a calling when God didn't tell you to get out. Mm -hmm. His blood, his mercy, his forgiveness, and his grace can restore you to anything. Yeah, yeah. Everybody has done something that they're ashamed of. Everybody has done something that they need to repent for. Everybody has sinned. Mm -hmm. but And the key is get rid of the shame. Get rid of the shame. Repent. And get it under the blood. Repent. Mm -hmm. Believe in the power of the blood. And go on and make the devil mad. Yes. Go on and make God glad. Yes. Go on with power. If somebody says, mm -hmm. who do you think you are? I think I'm a blood-washed child of God washed yes. by the blood of Jesus. Who are you? <laughs> Amen. I mean, you don't want to talk against the blood, do you? No, that's right. You don't right. want to talk against the blood. Who do you think you could be up there doing that or doing this or doing that? Mm. Well, I'm a blood-washed Christian. The Bible did say his blood washes away all of our sins. Mm -hmm. And we all need to be glad for that because if the Lord regarded iniquity, who, who could, could stand? stand? That's right. Who could stand? And really... Wow. wow. I know the older I get, Carla, the less I want to accuse anybody of anything <laughs> I because, know. I mean, it's like I'm the eldest with the stone, and it's like when they when Jesus said, "You that are without sin, cast the first stone." Well, the more mature got it quicker than the younger ones because it <laughs> said they all dropped their rocks from the oldest to the youngest. So it's the younger ones have a hard time. You know, young you can tell baby Christians and childish Christians because there's a lot of accusation going on, a lot of finger pointing. Think I know it all. I yeah, nah, 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 nah. yeah. You grow up a little bit and you'll start going more like this and saying, "No, nah, I don't need to point my finger at anybody." No, in fact, you'll help restore people. Definitely. There's, I won't have time to get into all of it right now, but even that story of Definitely. the eagles, when the eagles are renewing their strength yes. and they're laying up on a rock somewhere, they have no feathers, they're weak, they're, they're oh, almost yeah, I love dying. That story. Yeah. Mm. They say in, in nature, they say that the older eagles who have already been through that renewal process will bring food and drop food mm -hmm. down to these weak, mm -hmm. hurting eagles to help get them restored but they say a lot of times the younger eagles who have never been there done that they'll come and they'll just start like picking on them and mm. poking on them and it's like but the older more mature ones they're like been there done that yep. we're going to help restore yep. you that's so <laughs> and, um, good yeah christians we need to be like that and we we're, need to we're be likened the mature them to the ones. eagle yeah yes yeah we're likened well, to the eagles <clears throat> you know kenneth hagan one time was asking the lord about that he was saying, Lord, I, I, see a lot of, uh, I see a lot of things not happening in the church that I feel are supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. why, why aren't ministers being restored when they fall? Why aren't uh, people being restored and, and helped and brought up and forgiven and encouraged to go on? Why isn't that happening? And the Lord led him to a scripture in Galatians 6 where it says, you which are spiritual, restore such in one. Yeah. Actually, verse before that says, if any of you be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Yeah. And so I, he said, well, Lord, I don't see that happening. I said, I don't, I don't see people being restored. I don't see minister. I see people being booted out and disqualified, excommunicated, people that are sorry yeah. for what they've done and repented. And he goes, why aren't they being restored? He says, the answer is in the verse. <clears throat> what do you mean? Well, the answer to why many aren't being restored today is in the verse. Yeah. What do you mean? He read the verse. You which are spiritual, restore such oh, an one. Yep. 
the Lord said there's not many spiritual people in the church. They're mm. still carnal. They're still baby Christians, and there's not a lot of restoring going on because if there was, if they were spiritual, there'd be more restoring going on. Mm. Ye which are spiritual, restore. Wow. Now, we know where accusations come from. Yes, we do. Who's the accuser of the brethren? The devil, Satan himself. Is the accuser yep. of the brethren. Mm -hmm. So we've got people that want to restore. We've got people that want to accuse. Which influence do you want to be under? I'm on the restoring side. <laughs> I'm on the restoring <laughs> side. We want to help people. Side. We want people to go forward. We yes. want people to go on. We want people to move yes. on. We need each other. So we need each other restored. We do. Because we, we all do. need who I can't say I don't need them. They can't say they don't need me. We all need each other. We need each other restored. Right. Just like if you had an injury on your body, you would want that healed up and right. restored so you could use it. Exactly. That's the way we need to be in the body of Christ. And it all comes back to maturity versus immaturity. Mm -hmm. People that are mature see that. Yep. People that are immature, uh, they, they only see themselves or something. You know, yeah. they don't see what the whole picture is all about. Yeah. They only see their part and what they want and what they don't want, yeah. what bothers them, what doesn't bother them. More kind of an interesting direction we took here, but that must it be is. what the Holy Ghost wanted. There's it is. people who need yeah. to hear this. So Yeah, we've only got Lord. like 30 seconds before we pray here. So is there anything else you want to say nope, about that's this? That's it. Friend, we just want you to know that there is mercy and there is grace. There is the powerful blood of Jesus yes. to cleanse yes. you from all your yes. sins and even relieve your conscience of this bothering sensation yep. the whole reason we started talking about this four weeks ago was to help you get to a place where you're at peace with god and as much as lieth in you peace with people around yes. you there's nothing like a clean conscience a clean heart especially when the evil day comes yes. it's like i'm ready oh boy <laughs> i know i'm forgiven yeah i've been doing my yes. best to live right i'm washed in the blood no yes. you don't COVID. no you don't cancer mm. no you don't depression not on me i am That's the righteousness right. of god in christ yes so let's go ahead and wrap this up. Amen. We'll pray. Heavenly Father, we're asking that those that are watching right now would get this in their spirit. Help them, Lord. Open up their understanding. Give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation concerning the things that you've been talking to us about in these last four weeks. Lord, we know it's your will that nothing is bothering our heart. We know it's your will that our conscience is clean, and it can be by the blood of Jesus and Amen. the power of God to live like we know we should live. Thank you, Father, for relieving hearts and conscience of guilty feelings and unworthy feelings and giving people boldness to live their life victoriously from this moment forward in Jesus' name. We're in faith with you, friend, yes. that it's happening. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody, for watching Arise Shine. We'll see you again next week. Got some great things next week, yes. some surprises, so we'll see yep. you there. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.